Warning, the warning, as always, has been removed. And if you're a person who suffers arachnophobia, that is a fear of spiders, or can't stand seeing lots of little spiders, well, this video is not for you, although it will be highly educational. Okay, well, welcome to the second video related to Spider Tank 3, which is full of deadly Australian redback spiderlings. This episode encompasses the dates between the 21st of October to the 31st of October 2020. This time around, I'm not doing the Spider Tank videos via weekly updates or weekly lots. Much of the footage that you'll see in these videos will be shot with time-lapse video. So every second one frame is taken and what it does do, it tends to distort and accelerate time. But I can slow the clips up to take a look at something if I see something funky going on. But as we stand in this episode, we're looking at a time frame after Egg Sac 6 is hatched within this spider tank. Egg Sac 7 will hatch in this episode here. And because I've got a far more knowledgeable audience related to spiders versus me, I did notice in the first episode all the spiderlings looked very similar. I couldn't tell the boys from the girls. And quite a few people in the audience said, well, that won't be known until maybe the second or third molt that the spiders do as they grow because they've got their skeletons on the outside and they've got to get rid of that skin to be able to grow to the next size. Without getting too bogged down in numbers, I did look on the wiki page and I always have these links in these videos. The females have 7 to 8 molts as they're maturing and getting to their adult size. The females can live for 3 years, but I think very few females live that long. As I found out with poor old Barbie, but we won't talk about Barbie in this episode because it's very sad what happened there. Males will have 5 molts, but they don't live for very long. They've got a 6 month lifespan and sadly what happens with a lot of males is they tend not to find any females and if they do find a female well guess what happens they become the females next breakfast lunch or dinner and that gets us back to the talk of what's going on in spider tank 3 and what i notice here in this second phase is sure the spiderlings were hatched up in that little cup area and a lot of the spiderlings stay up there but some start to venture to other parts of the spider tank, mainly coming towards the light, because I already knew from spider tank 2, the spiderlings will always head towards light. And I can see a divide happening with the spiderlings in the spider tank. I'm not sure whether that's based on them being a boy or a girl, without using the S word because they're on YouTube. But there are some spiderlings in here who seem to be very active in setting up new places to live while... The others like to just stay not too far away from where they hatched, so some are playing a very safe game, while other spiderlings in this tank seem to be playing a fairly aggressive game and setting up areas to live and sort of saying, well, this is my zone, and if you come into my zone, I might eat you. Let me just go to some real-time footage that I shot of these tiny spiderlings, and the ones which are away from the top and doing it their own way... I notice that if another spider comes near them, they can get quite agitated. Now, this sets up a sport going on where one spider will come across another spider and then one will chase the other one. And really, the only way to survive is to run faster than the spider that's chasing you. So what I do notice is the spiders that have broken away from the group at the top seem to be wired in a far more aggressive way. They seem to be mimicking something that you would see in an adult redback spider. So maybe that's saying something to me. I've got a hunch these will become female redback spiders, although I can't tell yet. I'm saying that because of the way they are behaving against the other spiders that come near them. If I'm wrong, and I may be wrong, and they are male spiders acting in this very aggressive way, well, I'll tell you what, that will be a surprise to me, but I can't go in there with a little marker and say, well, that one there's playing up. Let's put a mark on that and we'll watch this one because these spiderlings are still very, very small. Incredibly difficult to video and keep in focus. So this video gets the time frame of the 26th of October, which was the time when Egg Sack 7 hatched. And it's always a bit creepy, spooky watching all those spiderlings doing what they do. They're very active when they come out of the egg sac, although this is sped up, but they seem to be very curious about their environment. They're putting down a lot of web, and I dare say they're just realizing, wow, we're finally out of that 
web metrics that we were stuck in for many weeks. It's a curious date, the 26th of October, because it's also the time when Barbie, the Redback Spider, laid up her 11th, and that was her final Redback Spider egg sack in the home that she had out in the garden. But I think the miracle to Barbie, the Redback Spider, and all Redback Spiders is, considering she was a baby spider at the beginning of 2020, in 11 months, she produced 11 Redback Spider egg sacks. Countless thousands of offspring from one Redback Spider she did have a winter break. Now count the months here. It was the 25th of March, egg sac 5. So let's say April, May, June, July, and it was August 15 was egg sac 6. So she had a very cool winter break of four months where she reclused away as redback spiders often do in colder temperatures. It's a tricky thing videoing these tiny spiders I've got a very, very narrow area of focus. I like to use light to control and keep the spiders in that area of focus. And sometimes I've got to put white in the background so we can start to see more clearly what's going on. Although I start to lose control of where the spiders like to sit in the tank. I can certainly see that those spiderlings that hatched from egg sac 6 have started to dominate the tank. And like I said before, the more aggressive ones have moved to a lower area. Now, the way I approach this is I try to take a bet on where action is going to happen and I put a camera in a spot for a period of time hoping to capture some radical spider action. And remember, I can't just whisper into the tank, hey, guys and girls, I want you to perform right in that spot there. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen like that, but sometimes I get lucky and I'm not sure exactly how lucky I got in this phase, but... As time goes on and the spiders become more and more aggressive and the desperation to live in the tank starts to really ramp up, I think I'm going to be capturing a fair bit of redback spider attitude. Remember, in Spider Tank 3, it's very much like the Hunger Games and redback spiders naturally will be cannibalistic in the way they survive. Put it this way, there's no food being introduced in the Spider Tank 3 and if you are a spider in there who struggles with the idea of eating little brother or sister, well, there's not a chance you're going to survive. In this spider tank, the most psychopathic redback spider is going to be the last spider in the tank. I'll give you a sneak peek into the next episode of Spider Tank 3, and it's starting to get fairly untidy in there. I'm starting to understand which of these spiderlings are becoming the dominant spiders in the tank. I'm also noticing other spiders that will take advantage of a free meal. And to me, that style of feeding very much reminds me of the way a male redback spider operates. I've got a hunch it's the females which are doing all the hardcore takedowns of other spiderlings in the tank. And the floor of the spider tank is starting to be littered with the fallen. Now the joyful thing that happens is... Egg sac number 8 hatches and we have lots more spiderlings coming into spider tank 3. But I've got a sneaky suspicion all they will become is cannon fodder and food for the established spiders from egg sac number 6. I really feel that the spider who will be the last spider in this tank will be derived from the first egg sac that hatched in the tank. As it stands they seem to have a massive advantage in this spider tank when it comes to Who's going to be having the next meal? In Spider Tank 3, the biggest question is, who will you have for dinner? Will it be little brother or little sister?